let's just do one more. Let's suppose we have a nice little simulated city that's got 300 houses now, and we want to begin decreasing the size of the city each iteration. So let's start by decreasing by 10 houses each iteration. If we start with 300 and we decrease as we move from zero to eight iterations, the first iteration, we would have 290 houses. The second iteration, 280 houses. Then 270, 260, 250. At six iterations, we would have 240 houses. At seven iterations, 230. And finally, at eight iterations, 220 houses. Why don't we just go ahead and graph that while we're here? Uh, so we've got 0, 300. 1 to 90, 2 to 80, 3 to 70, 4 to 60, 5 to 50, 6 to 40, 7 to 30, and 8 to 20, which is, again, that nice line. This one is now a decreasing line. So there's our scenario 3. Okay, now the next one, we're going to decrease the number of houses by 7% each iteration. And so when we calculate the first iteration, if we decrease by 7%, all we have left is 93%. So this first one, we would do 300 times 0 0.93. When we reduce by 7%, we have 93% left. If we do that calculation, we get iteration one is 279 houses, so a bit less than what we had in scenario three. In the second iteration, what we wanna do is 0.93 times the first iteration. So it's 279 times 0 0.93, which is 259.47. Now, from experience, we know that that's also the same thing as 300, times 0 0.93 times 0 0.93, or 300 times 0 0.93 to the second power, right? And so we could calculate anything in this table by doing 300 times 0.93 to the iteration power. Let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the table that way. Iteration three is 241.3071. Iteration four is 224.4156. Iteration five is 208.7065. Iteration six is 194.0971. Iteration seven is 180.5103, and iteration eight is 167.8745. If we go ahead and graph these points, let me graph them in an orangish color. Uh, we still have 0, 300, then we have 1, and then 279, which is right below 280. You see there's already a big divergence between the two scenarios. Then we have 2 and about 260, and we have 3, 241, 4, 224, 5, 209-ish, 6, 194, 7, 180, and 8, 167. Now that might look a little bit like a straight line to you, but I can promise it is a curve. And I'll show you over in Desmos in just a second. So this is curving. And let's look at how it's curving. So this curve here is scenario four. Now let's just write the formula for both of those curves. Scenario three, we would write as S sub three of N. And we started with 300 houses and we subtracted 10 for every iteration, which would be 300 minus 10 N. For scenario four, that's S sub four of N. We start with 300 houses and then every iteration, we multiply that by 0.93 to the nth power. So that would be 300 left parentheses 0.93 to the nth power. Let's go over to Desmos and take a look at that. 
Now over in Desmos, I'm going to write these formulas with out those subscripts because Desmos gets a little angry when you have the subscripts both in the table and the formulas. So let's call the first one capital U of N. That's the 300 minus 10 N. And if I add that to the data, we can see it's a nice straight line going down. Capital V of N is going to be 300 times 0.93 to the N. And if I add that graph, you can see that it is a curve. The part that we're seeing doesn't look too curvy, but you can see that the graph actually does curve back and eventually hits the line again at about 25,48, roughly. So the line and the curve actually have two intersection points. The first intersection point is at 0, 0,300. They both started with 300 houses. And then they actually equal each other at about uh, 25 iterations. Let's just summarize what we found out. When a mathematical model grows by a fixed percent every iteration, let me just highlight that word percent, we get a different kind of growth than it when it grows by a fixed amount every iteration. So that word percent is very different than that word amount. When something grows or declines by the fixed amount every time, what we get is a linear model. On the other hand, when something grows or declines by a fixed percent every iteration, what we get is called an exponential model. When we grow every iteration, we actually call this a discrete exponential model because it makes jumps forward at distinct time intervals, right? At discrete time intervals. We can write the function in general as f of n, that's f left parentheses n right parentheses, equals a times b to the nth power. If we write it like this, then b is going to be the growth factor. That's like what we saw then b is going to be the growth factor. In our functions, that was the 0.93 for scenario 4 and the 1.10 for scenario 2. a is the initial value for scenarios 1 and 2, that was 100 houses, and for scenarios 3 and 4, that was 300 houses. And then n is the iteration number. We often will use T for time instead of N for iterations. So T could stand for years, months, weeks, days, hours, etc. since we begin the experiment or we begin measuring.